Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thorn. In today's video, we will be discussing the three most common issues with cognitive function development and how to fix them. So, are you in the grip? Are you struggling in a tertiary loop? Are you stuck and unable to change or get out of your own head? Do you find it hard to take ownership of your mind, of your cognitive functions? Do you find it hard to live for yourself and to pursue your own passion? Through this, all of us are going to run into issues with the cognitive functions. There are going to be times when you struggle to access and to use certain cognitive functions properly. There are times when it's hard to maintain a sense of agency and self-control. Let's talk about the three most common issues and how to deal with them. Issue number one, the most common issue when it comes to cognitive function development is looping. Looping is constant. It happens to us all the time. The mind has a tendency to play tricks on us. What that means is, yeah, we get stuck in a pattern. What happens is we enter into a self-feeding loop that we can't get out of. And in that loop, we kind of lock ourselves out to new feedback and to growth. What tends to happen is when we want to... What I've found happens is when we get overwhelmed by challenge and by a new problem or something that is beyond our ability, we start to loop. Our brain goes, okay, how can I make this simple for myself? And it starts coming up with excuses, it comes up with simple strategies and tricks to kind of keep itself uh, avoid from uh, avoiding. <laughs> it keeps you from dealing with and confronting the problem directly. So if you're stuck in a loop, the first thing you'll notice is you're constantly delaying action on a goal or a project or you're avoiding living in and speaking out your truth, your honest feelings about something. Now, why does that happen? Why are the grips, uh, the loops so common? Well, the first thing I've noticed is people that are stuck in a loop tend to struggle with their general sense of playfulness, their general sense of humor and general perfectionism. Loops are the most common with people that have strongly perfectionistic tendencies. That means they expect a lot of themselves. They're highly serious, they're hardworking, and they want to present a perfect image to the world. What that means is you want to follow your passion or you want to do something important, but you want to do it right. And the desire to do it right is constantly getting in your way. If you start pursuing goals and you encounter mistakes, you're hard on yourself. You get into this, oh, I messed up again and I suck and why can't I ever do this right? And typically when you're too hard on yourself, it becomes hard to sustain goals. So even if you come up with goals and it happens and usually uh, people in the third year loop do have some goal, and something they want but they just find themselves shooting themselves down and they find themselves uh, so serious and so uh, fussed about doing things the right way that it becomes hard for them to manage these goals and so they give up easily they're easily demotivated and they become more easily confused about what they want so what can you do about that well the most important starting point is probably to try to nurture and rekindle a relationship with your inner child the tertiary function represents often the child, but the tertiary also represents the destabilized child. So the best starting point is rekindling your sense of humor. Often the thing I've found with people that have strong goals and that stay consistent in their goals and in their passions is their high dose of humor. They make mistakes all the time. They mess up and they plan to fail. They know it's not gonna work out immediately. They know it's gonna be hard. They know there are gonna be struggles and they laugh about it. Oh my God, there I go again. Oh, I messed up one more time. Yeah, it happens, you know, it happens to everyone. It happens to the best of us, you know, uh, we're human and having that sense of positive belief in yourself and acceptance of forgiveness of mistakes is key to success. So what you need to do is you need to start forgiving yourself, start being easier on yourself, start working on trying to uh, maintain a positive attitude, try to celebrate small accomplishments. You do small good things all the time, you make small steps, you, take, you learn new things, you're improving. So try to work on and to rekindle and to appreciate yourself for the things you do. 
you're not going to succeed by constantly being hard on yourself. You're going to need to learn to support and coach and be kind to yourself. The second issue of cognitive function development is more serious and more hard to deal with, and that is being in the grip of the inferior function. So when we are in the grip of the inferior function, we often struggle with even knowing what it is that we want. So it goes more seriously than being in a loop. People that are in the grip of their inferior function, they're kind of out of control. They've lost control of themselves. What happens is, you know, the dominant function represents your basic willpower. It represents what you want to do more than anything. It represents your flow function and who you are in a flow state. People that are good at using the dominant function find themselves constantly in a state of positive flow. That means they're constantly experiencing energy, passion and motivation. And beyond that, they experience personal motivation. People with a strong dominant function do things for themselves. You could even say in harsh words they're more selfish, but in a positive way. They're selfish in the sense that they do things for themselves. They do what they are most passionate about. They dedicate themselves to their vision, to their cause, to the things that matter most to them. They care less about appreciation, approval, money or status. They do things because they love to do it, because they think it's important to themselves and to their own well-being. So the solution to being in the grip is often learning to put yourself first. People in the grip of the inferior function are often stuck in their persona, their image. People with a strong inferior function, an inferior function that's taken over their dominant function, are so concerned with what other people think about them how many likes they get, how much money they get, how much status they get, how much approval they get. They need constant feedback from other people. Other people have to constantly approve of every decision you make. You need to check in with others to make sure that other people still like you, that people are still with you. You have to present a strong image. You have to have other people on your side. Typically, we use and we get taken over by the inferior function because we don't trust our own judgment. The dominant function represents your own judgment, what you feel is right, what you believe in, what you find to be important. The inferior function represents what you think other people want from you, what you think other people expect from you. And people in the grip, they tend to be quite stressed, quite overwhelmed, because it's very hard to please other people. Other people have often conflicting ideas and expectations. It's often impossible to give other people what they want. No matter how much you work on yourself and how much you try to present the perfect image, people are going to find something that's wrong with you. They're going to have some things they don't like about you. Some people are going to love you and some are going to hate you. You're going to have both friends and enemies. So often what we have to do is we have to recognize this, you know, I can't please everyone. So the most important person I have to please is myself. I have to accept myself. I have to appreciate myself for who I am. And I have to respect my own judgment. I can ask for advice. I can ask for help, but I have to first and foremost, learn to think about and trust my own gut. The third issue is a little bit less serious, but still a problem. And that is optimism, cognitive optimism. When the auxiliary function takes over too much, together with, to some extent, the inferior function, what happens is we present and we try to keep a positive, perfect image. We try to seem like we're always happy. We try to seem like everything is great. People that are stuck in this optimistic cognitive development issue find themselves unable to be honest and vulnerable with other people. When the auxiliary function takes over too much together with the inferior function, we feel we have to always seem strong. We have to seem perfect, like we have it all together. We have to seem like everything is going great all the time, you know, and that's not true. It's the Instagram dysfunction. It's the social media dysfunction, you know, like people are constantly trying to pour themselves into like showing how social they are, how outgoing they are. They've getting, they're getting new promotions. They have new job offers coming in. They have salary things uh, happening to them. They're 
They're always smiling and always in good moods. They're never sick. Everything is great. They're never experiencing any form of doubt. But what kind of a person has that? The truth is, it's healthy to have some degree of doubt and to have some degree of insecurity. You don't always have to be happy. And successful people aren't always happy. The truth is, if you're looking for happiness, don't. <laughs> instead of trying to pursue happiness, instead of trying to pursue a constant state of optimism or perfection, try to instead pursue your dream life. If you have your dream life, it doesn't matter if you have hard days. If you have and do things for your passion, if you follow your goals, if you live the life that you care about the most, that you value the most, it doesn't matter if you're stressed or if things are hard or if they're difficult sometimes. You can get through it because you know that you're doing things for the right reasons. You know that you are doing things for the right cause. So focus on having the right set of values, living in tune with the right set of morals, pursuing the right set of goals, having the right set of thoughts, living the right set of lifestyle. You know, make sure that you have all the pieces together that you are doing and living and honoring yourself, and your intentions, that you're being honest, that you're being and showing integrity, that you show character. Try to work on and be the person you want to be more than anything. Try to realize your ideal self. Try to maintain your flow state and recognize you know, that the flow state is when you are moved forward by an invisible current. Nothing can stop the flow state when you're in it. The truth is if you believe in yourself enough and if you polish your dominant function and auxiliary function and learn to let these two functions lead you, you're going to have an easier time. You're going to have dark days, you're going to have stress, you're going to have anxiety, but you're going to have the right mindset and the right energy to manage those situations. That means even if you're scared, even if things look hard or difficult, even if you're taking risks and even if you feel a bit insecure about it sometimes, you know that it's the right thing to do. You know that you're doing something good and you know and you appreciate yourself. And when things do go wrong and when you do mess up and when things don't go as planned, you forgive yourself because you know that you gave it your best shot and you know that you're going to learn from it and that you're going to do even better tomorrow. That means learn to nurture a growth mindset. To be individuated means to be in touch with yourself, to know who you are and to trust and to honor your own decisions and your beliefs. But what if you don't know what your beliefs are? Like I said earlier, the hardest of these cognitive dysfunctions to break is the grip. It's really hard to break the grip. And how do you do it? How do you get out of what other people think about you? Well, there are numerous things you can do, but the most important thing is what you do for yourself. Schedule time for yourself. Schedule time to do things for yourself. Make and think about what you want with every decision you make. Try to make decisions. Try not to leave decisions on to other people. Try to show what you want. Show your cards, wear your feelings honestly. Share your struggles and your joys. Be both as open with your success as you are with your failures. Cognitive function development comes with learning that all functions matter. All functions are important, but all functions have to be related to in a certain way. The inferior function is not inherently bad as long as you let the dominant function lead. And when you let the dominant function lead, you're going to find that you're using the inferior function a lot better. Truth is, a lot of time when we are in a flow state, we find ourselves getting our problems out of the way. We, we deal with our insecurities, we deal with our problems, we deal with our struggles, and somehow they're magically carried away with us. The same goes for the auxiliary and tertiary. The auxiliary is and should be the leader of the tertiary. The auxiliary is the mentor. It's your value system. It's your higher self. It's your role model. It's who you ideally want to be and what you ideally know is the right thing to do. Your tertiary is your sidekick. That means the tertiary function can represent a small specialization or skill that you have that you can use 
to succeed and to do better in your passion and in putting yourself out there. When you know your functions and you know what they can do and you know their limits, you know also not to overuse them. You know that there is a limit to how much the inferior function and working on the inferior function is going to help you. You know that there are risks associated with caring too much and working too hard on your image or social status. You know that the tertiary function, while great and while something you can use as a tool to be successful at work, is and always should come secondary to your moral compass or to your higher beliefs and your higher goals. Don't let what you know already stand in the way of what you can learn. Constantly challenge yourself to learn new things and to improve and work on yourself. These are my tips for cognitive function development. I hope this video was able to help you better understand the relationship you have to your cognitive functions. Now let me know in the comments down below, which of these three issues do you struggle with the most? Are you more in the grip, more in the loop, or more obsessed with presenting a positive, optimistic image? Thank you all for watching.